Hello and welcome to the Alternative Living Podcast. We're B and Theo and together we are the Indie Projects. We travel full time meeting interesting people who have handcrafted alternative homes and lifestyles. So thanks for joining us and let's get to it. This week we met up with Robbie Cumming, a full-time liverboard on a 42-foot narrow boat who has been travelling in his boat Naughty Lass for two years now. As a continuous cruiser, Robbie is always on the move and as well as finding new locations to stay, he works remotely and makes YouTube videos of his endeavours. We travelled to Sheffield to film a tour of his boat and sat down with a cup of coffee to discuss all things tiny floating home. Okay, so we are sitting on Robbie's boat right now. Um, I'm B. I'm Theo. I'm Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're basically just, this is our pilot podcast episode and Robbie has been lucky enough to be picked to be the first person on it. Um, we just wanted to ask you some questions because you live on a boat. So And just general yeah. chit chat about kind of living on a boat and... Alternative kind of, living. Yeah, alternative living, why, why you chose a boat. So why on earth did you buy a narrow boat? Well, it goes back to, um, um, I, I honestly, I come from Dorset, there's no canals there, absolutely nothing like that. Um, I never really had any experience of the canal lifestyle until I, well, I had a girlfriend in London, her friend had two boats, um, and one of them was a narrow boat, and the other one was a wide beam. She lived on the wide beam with her boyfriend, and then said, Robbie, because I wasn't working at the time, do you want to come up to London and live on the narrow boat? So uh, that's how it all started for me. So uh, yeah, so basically imagine me, I'm getting on board on this boat and as soon as I start on the tiller, I'm getting the engine going and I'm shooting off, I'm just like, this is it, I'm absolutely sold. Um, But from then it was like three months, then they sold the boat and it was about two to three years before I actually got this one. Wow, so how many boats did you look at before you found this boat? Well, I spent about two years looking for for one, but I I think I only viewed about four or five. So I had just such a clear picture in my mind what I wanted. Um, and I think a lot of people do, but when it actually comes to choosing the right one, you do make a lot of compromises, you know. You, yeah. yeah. What, so, were you, what were you looking for in a boat then? Yeah, I, wanted, I knew I wanted something about 50 foot. I've ended up with something with 42 foot. Um, I knew I wanted you know, enough space inside. Um, headroom was very important because I'm six foot one. So, um, and Theo, you're even taller. You're six foot... Six three. Six three. Yeah. And um, so you, know, you have to watch out for, for that with the narrow boats a lot. Um, and yeah, just somewhere um, to, to keep stuff. But then you, you downsize, don't you? You get rid of, uh, well, we've had to get rid of all the stuff. Haven't you? And the same with you guys. Mm. Yeah. Because uh, you live on a... Yeah, we've we still got a few, <laughs> a few boxes left at our parents. But apart yeah. from that, we're, we're pretty much, everything's between the boat and the van. They're probably listening to us right now going, yeah, you bloody got some boxes. (laughs) Literally, yeah, we had that conversation last week. So, Yeah. Yeah. You've you've also got a van as well, haven't you? Yeah. So you sort of split between the two. Yeah, so we've got a VW camper van, T4. Uh, We are thinking about upgrading to something bigger, but that's done us amazing. Like we've travelled 23 different countries uh, in Europe. Like we spent a year and a half living full time in it Mm. and... And it is doable in a, you know, we oh, can't yeah. even stand up in our van, yeah. but, you know, we managed yeah. to do it for that long and it I was think fine. as humans, you just adapt. Yeah, you do. You know, you just like, okay, I can get used to it. And you, you end up living outside longer. Yeah. So, you know, you'll spend more time outside and less time in the van, which is kind of what you do that lifestyle for anyway. Yeah. But then being in the boat has allowed us to have more room and stand up and... We do prefer that. Yeah. <laughs> so if yeah. we could, if the boat had wheels, it would be like the perfect thing <laughs> yeah. for us. And sadly not. Yeah. yeah. That would be good. So that's so. the thing. Right now we're in we're in Sheffield, and I've brought the boat all the way from Bristol, um, and that because I'm working during the week, like most people, that's taken about two years. Because um, I'm not on a rush. I'm not trying to sort of zoom past everything. I'm just trying to explore every sing- well, every city and town along the way if I can. But that's the cool thing with you is that you've kind of got a day job, yeah. But they allow you to work from the boat, yeah. So and I've got the, so the the day job for me is for people listening is basically um, public relations, so it's just normal office job, and um, I have a boss. We you know we've got an agency, um, and we just work from home, and it's obviously saves money on office space, and 
allows us to be much more flexible. So it works works for us totally. Yeah, it's I, like I think that's definitely the future. And I know that a lot of big companies like Google and uh, other big companies, especially in the States, they seem to be adopting that kind of way of working. The remote working. Yeah, because they don't have to have you know, people coming into an office, they have to therefore pay for a big office space and everything that goes with that. And people seem a lot happier and can be where they want in the world as long as they get the work done. Happy days. Yeah, like you can go over the around the whole country in your home and work wherever you want, which is really nice. Yeah. That's cool. So it's not always that easy though. I mean, there, I've, you know, there's places where obviously I've come through and the, it's in a valley, there's no signal at all. Uh, yeah. And it's getting dark and I'm like, what am I going to do, you know? I've got to get to the next place and uh, sometimes I'm there travelling all the way through the night just to get somewhere. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what, ways, but... yeah, the, the kind of marina where we're based at the moment for a little bit, uh, one of the main factors was it had 4G, didn't it? So yeah. we kind of just instantly got our phones out when we got there and went, yeah, this is this is good because, you know, we need to be online every day, like... It's just the way we make money. So yeah, oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So internet's really important for you. What like um, have you had? Like you said, it's been hard when you've been in places where there's no signal. What else has been like something that? Because obviously it's great being on a boat, but there are going to be downers. Like, has there been anything that was really crappy or that you'd say yeah, I mean, watch out plenty for? Of, plenty of challenges. Like, um, I don't have a washing machine on board. Some people do, but um, I don't have one, so I have to find where the nearest laundrette is. And right now. Um, as you'll see in the video we've made, my war- war- my laundry basket is absolutely full to bursting, and um, things like travelling to to meetings and things like that that I've got to do and trade shows, um, you have to sort of make sure you're near enough to a train station. Yeah. Some people have cars with their boats, but I sort of ditched mine the first few months. I just sort of just sold it because it was just too much, sort of running running backwards and forwards yeah. really. But um, yeah, I know I know a few people who do that and. They basically say it's pretty much a nightmare, you know, to to kind of jump on your bike, ride to your car, then try and find a parking space nearby. Yeah, especially if you're on your own as well, because like yeah, in a duo, one right. of you can go yeah, and drive yeah. and the other one can yeah. do the boat and vice yeah. versa. But if you're on your own, you've got to do it all yourself. So. And if you're in the country in the middle of nowhere, it's like, how are you going to find somewhere nearby? There might not even be a road nearby. And then you're going to end up cycling miles down the towpath to find your boat. I've just... done that. Um, actually, uh, recently, so I lost my bank card recently, my debit card. I was completely in the middle of nowhere mm. and I just I ran out of options, really. I had to go to the, get a taxi to the nearest town and then try and, you know, um, get a, do a bank transfer with the taxi driver. It gave me cash <laughs> back and then I can actually get some shopping. Oh, so cool. it's just small things like that because because this actually goes on to, because um, I'm continuously cruising, I don't have a an address. I do, it's my, it's my parents' address, but that's 200 miles away from right where I am now. Yeah. So, um, yeah, th- little things like that just to become a major issue. Mm. So when you got the boat, did you do anything to it or did you just leave it as is? Well, when I got the boat, it sort of resembled like um, an old man sort of shed, really. Um, a very nice looking shed, but um, it was very much, um, there was carpets everywhere even up the walls and um, the, uh, you know, the, the mattress was just horrible and there were a few leaks as well and just all the general stuff that you have to sort out. Um, but yeah, I spent about three months doing it up basically. Um, I, was in a mo- I was in a leisure mooring to start off with and they let me stay um, a little bit longer. Uh, begrudgingly, I think. I think they wanted to get rid of me <laughs> after, after I just sanded everything down and made a complete mess. No, it's, it was really refreshing to find your boat online and, and find you on YouTube because, you know, there's a lot of boats out there that are kind of factory fitted and, and basically look like caravans, but your boat's got that kind of rustic kind of cabin, log cabin feel to it. Mm. It's quite traditional, but without um, being like a lot of the traditional boats you will see who are they're very polished and they've got, it's all heritage sort of, so they've got it as it would have been. Mm. This is very much like, I think, you know, contemporary style in um, I don't know, shabby, chic, retro, whatever, you could put as many words as you like in there, couldn't you really? But yeah, it's just... It's but just I can imagine in the winter when you're, you know, sitting around the, the log burner. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it just becomes the centre of the boat in winter, definitely. And a lot of the, your thoughts go to sort of, you know, you're, as you're, even as you're cruising along, you're looking at, 
word at the side going, should I just get that? Should I pull in and get that? Or, you know, <laughs> just you become, you become, I don't know, a lot more, what's the word? Um, yeah, just not, pro yeah, primal maybe. Like, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. How do you, um, how do you handle the winters? Like, do you get a winter mooring or anything like that? Do you go to the marina? I have done that. So, so uh, last year I went to, um, well, last December, went to Leeds. And um, when I got there, I knew that I wanted to stay there for a bit, especially over Christmas. But I also knew that it's mostly 48 hour moorings and things like that. Um, but the Canal and River Trust, who look after all the waterways, they actually put on some winter moorings for people. And uh, so uh, for, just, for just 80 pounds a month, I had a mooring right by the train station in the centre of one of the co most cosmopolitan cities in the UK. That's so really good. amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great. And one of the questions that we get asked a lot is in the winter is like, how do you stay warm? It must be freezing. But for us, I mean, the log burner is too big for our boat anyway. Oh, is it? Yeah, Most it of the time I'm sitting in my boxes with toasted. the doors open. <laughs> <laughs> it gets like 30 degrees. I know, yeah. <laughs> Eyeful. <laughs> but yeah, there could be snow outside, doors open, boxes on. Yeah, that's it, it's just really warm, isn't it? Yeah. And you have to keep that fire going and keep it stoked overnight. Otherwise, you know, we've done shifts before. So getting up at three in the morning, re relay the fire which isn't pleasant, but you soon get used to it. I don't know how you've... Well, that is the skill, it. I think. Over, yeah. and perhaps over the years, you, you get it down to a fine art, and I'm, I'm still learning. You know, like a lot of things about the boat, I'm still learning. But, yeah, making sure you've got the right type of coal so you know what yeah. time of the night it will go out or something, you know. It uh, just, yeah, it comes with experience, doesn't it? We did meet a couple once who'd kept a fire going from October till April. I just didn't go out. No, literally <laughs> I, the whole winter. I have winter. no idea how they did that. Co they said yeah. it was just coal. And they, right. did, they didn't go out at all. So do you burn wood and coal? Yeah, I do. And I, I'd love to burn more wood, really, because it's more abundant and you can yeah. can obviously pick it up free. Yeah. There's, there's something special yeah. about wood as well. I don't know. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know it's, it's a dry heat yeah. most of the time. And yeah. um, it's yeah. just that smell you get from it. It's just you yeah. can't beat it, can and you? And coal, it, it can be quite dirty as well. Like yeah. it does yeah. give off stuff, you know. So ideally wood is the best, but coal does give out bigger heat real fast so longer, yeah so. yeah what would you say to people listening who you know might have some money saved up maybe thinking about putting a deposit down on a house like but really they want a boat what what would you say well this is yeah this is where i really struggled so um um if you want to um get into the, is it getting into the house housing housing ladder sort yeah. of things, yeah. that sort of thing that we're talking about. Well, yeah, you can use it to do that, but I think as soon as you start, get, get yourself a boat, you probably think, actually, I'm going to see my life in a different way now yeah. and do different things. But um, yeah, you could, you, so that to get to the stage where you think when you could actually afford a boat, you probably need to get a personal loan from the bank, but um, most of them won't want to hear you say the words live aboard yeah. or, or continuous cruising. They they will mostly want to, to to hear you say it's going to be in a marina for most of the time. Yeah. So um, I guess yeah. that's fairly difficult if you you know you want a constant cruise you haven't got enough money to just pay cash, you know. But I'm sure it's it's doable, isn't it? It's just you have to kind of just work around them boundaries and yeah, or some or you yeah, know get a smaller boat, um, or, you know, or yeah, sort yeah. of change your yeah. And that's the thing, you can always upgrade later on. Like we have a 30 foot boat mm -hmm. and, you know, it, sometimes we feel like we could do with bigger, but for now it's it's perfect for us, isn't it? it yeah, like it last year we were thinking, oh, we, we're going to get a bigger boat because, you know, it's just not working for us. And then instead we were like, actually, let's just move the wood burner, move the bed, do this and the other. And now it's, you know, it's fine for us. So, I mean, it's nice. It's It's a pain in the ass, like... The thought of getting another boat is just well, like... Well, uh. just moving the bur the wood burner alone was a big, big job. But after we did do that, it allowed us to have a fixed bed and it just meant that we could, you know, you know, one of us could be in bed while the other one stays up and work. And it's not like you're having to pack down the whole boat every night. And yeah, because the thing is, we'd done that for a year and a half in the van. 
We'd done like, yeah. we never had a permanent bed. So we were like, when, actually, when we were looking for a narrow boat, one of the prime things was that it had to have a permanent bed. And of course, we chose one without a permanent bed. <laughs> so it's just like, what That's are we doing? That's just an example of some of the things yeah. that you uh, compromise Exactly. Yeah. We saw the boat and we were just like, you know what? It doesn't have a permanent bed and it's really small, but it's actually what we want. So yeah. that's what we went with. And we did, we did live like that for a year and then we changed it. And now it's but pretty it's much like perfect. But it's like, if you buy a house, like... The majority of people go in and strip everything out anyway. That's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or change the layout. Yeah. You know, even if the layout's perfectly fine, they, they want to add their own thing. And I, I think you have to live in a space to know that it's not working for you. A lot of people, um, they will buy a, a sail away and um, they'll just set off and um, do it out while they're going along. And I, and I knew that was an option. But I, I knew the downsides in that, and that is that you just have to keep moving things from side to side, backwards mm. and forwards. And just the whole process will take longer. So, yeah, that's that's one option. But I just I just thought <laughs> I'm a bit lazy. I just thought it's too much work. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to start living living on on the boat, really. So yeah, that's the thing. It's quite exciting at first, isn't it? It's like yeah. you know, you're like I just want to get on and just want to cruise and I just want to see some places and yeah. and kind of get to grips with my boat and and yeah, it it is the you know I feel like it is as magical as people imagine it, but yes. also it's yeah. not as well. Well, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, it's uh, you know, there's a lot of people who just you know come on at the weekends and that's fine. Yeah. But you know, if you're living on it 24 seven, you do come into it's a slightly different story, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah exactly. Different things. Um, yeah. I definitely think the positives outweigh the negatives, though. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, what you just wouldn't do it, would you? No. You're not do you, think, it do you think you have to be a certain type of person to? to I think really possibly. To yeah. Although I'm not 100 percent sure because. Everyone I've met has been totally different. Like, but then there's also been a lot of people who I feel like are very similar to me. So, I mean, you get oh, there's a whole different age range of people that live on boats. It's not just young people. Like, you can get right. some pretty old people on them as well, and that's pretty impressive, especially because you know yeah, they do require work boats, whatever you're doing on them. Well, outside of London, I've not actually seen many youngsters. That's really. That's a good point. Yeah, um, that is true. Because yeah. Like even going through Birmingham and Leeds and Liverpool, Manchester, I just I haven't really seen that many other young boaters really. Um, you know, below the age of well, what I'm thirty five. So mm. it's yeah, been a very a much a rarity. I'm, I'm most I mostly meet retired couples along the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Well, definitely in the marina we're based at at the moment, we we're the only we, people we're probably the youngest under forty five. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're the youngest by like maybe twenty years. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, it's fine. It's fine, yeah. But yeah, no, it actually, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they call us the younguns, don't they? Yeah. It's just yeah. like, okay. They do. It's funny. Um. So obviously, what's been like a really weird thing that you've experienced being on a boat? Really weird. Well, you mentioned earlier about people getting on your boat. Yeah, that's you don't strange. Know. <laughs> Well, let's talk about that then, B, because, uh, yeah, I was in York, and this is a city, if you've been there, you'll know it's just very, it's a, a very nice city to visit, and there's loads of loads going on, and quite touristy, you know. Um, but, but so as going in on a, as a boater, I just had so much problems there. I, you know, things like um, the facilities weren't up to scratch, the flood river, the flood levels and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. You really have to watch out for that. But, yeah, what I wasn't prepared for was... Uh, not only people jumping on my boat, which happened, I had a couple of girls in the middle of the night, about 4am in the morning, come along and jump on top of my roof. I can't believe that. And um, yeah, they, they chased them off. <laughs> well, I just I basically <laughs> opened the, the windows and they saw my face and that was it, obviously. They just had to <laughs> run. Um, but the, actually the first night I got to York, um, there was like a police raid going on. And there no was, there was um, a speedboat sort of rushing no down way. the water. The, the wake off those is that's serious you know and I just felt like I was being raided oh as well <laughs> so helicopters boat oh. going past I thought oh well I'm in York but I, I would like expect that in, in Birmingham <laughs> not York yeah that's crazy oh talking about being raided the guy who owns the marina that where we're at I parked the van in front of the bins that's a no-no <laughs> yeah no I woke up yeah. with the whole boat was kind of wallowing it was <laughs> banging on the side and obviously it's you know it's you were it's having metal. a lion weren't you yeah i was having a lion and <laughs> yeah that that changed my whole life i think <laughs> just, so you moored at a facility sort of point 
Yeah. There was, yeah, yeah. basically, like, the, they'd come to <laughs> empty the bins. The Theo's van was in the <laughs> they way. They couldn't get the lorry in. Because your van so was in the way. So he was panicking. He was like, okay, they're going to they're gonna leave. And they did leave. And obviously, it's going to cost him money to get them to come back because obviously, it's a private it's a private place. So he has to he has to pay for that. He was uh, not happy with you. He was not happy, but I made it up with him. Yeah. It was it was funny. We had a laugh afterwards, but at the time, I I felt like someone was going to swing through the window on a rope or something. And yeah, it was pretty scary because you don't know who that you know. You've just awoken to banging and screaming and shouting, and it was pretty. Dramatic. Yeah, I mean, on a boat, it's also the same in a van. You are a lot more at risk of like people being a bit more weird when it comes to your because <laughs> it, it, it is it is it, weird, it? isn't it? It's like you don't really get many people like banging on your house. No, but they are. Or yeah. like smashing your windows, in, which in, did happen to you. Yeah, and in Birmingham City Centre, there's lots of people who have to put signs on saying, you know, I've got a kid, please don't bang on the boat. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've seen that in London as yeah. well, baby on board. Yeah. Sort of yeah. thing. Just the fact yeah. that people have to put them notes on their window is just bizarre to me. Yeah, That's, so, yeah. You know. I mean, it definitely is. It's a it's a downside in that obviously it's your home and people want to look inside it because it is really interesting though it's like yeah, if you've never been on thing. a boat yeah, yeah it's like what yeah. is this if you yeah. if you're not from England you know you don't really see them anywhere so it's like I want to but it's you just know, common it's sense really isn't it you just kind of you you admire it from afar and you you don't kind of try and look you through the windows or you don't roof roof climb on the roof and dance yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> four a.m. <laughs> yeah no so so mad. what's some of the good the good memories so far. Um... Have you had any moments that really stand out? There's been some crazy moments where I've just been out in the middle of nowhere, like in, in Yorkshire, sort of going through the almost the Dales area near Skipton and um, a place called Gargrave. And um, it, it just the mist, it was really early in the morning and I was just going through the mist and it was just completely still and it just felt, you know, completely almost going into the void. <laughs> so, and, there's, and obviously there's moments where you're going through a really long tunnel you're just thinking, you know, it's quite a scary moment actually. You're thinking, oh my God, what could happen if just the whole, the whole thing just collapsed on me? But mm. um, yeah, so living on a boat, I think, toughens you up, um, but it also gives you some amazing, sort of, uh, definitely a lot of amazing scenery and yeah. uh, amazing moments of, yes, I've just done that. I've, I've done those 25 locks in one go and it's all been fantastic. So um, it must be hard work because it's just you on the boat, isn't it? So yeah, if you're single-handed, uh, that changes it a little bit as well. Yeah. So uh, you know, most so people going through have locks, crew, and, but yeah. yeah, going through locks um, becomes a bit more of a sort of a uh, all-action thing. So uh, I've got climbing up ladders out of the lock, and you know, then when I'm at the top of the lock, meeting some people, explaining to me how it works, oh, yeah. <laughs> whilst also tying it up, and then get, yeah. letting the water in and out, and yeah, but it, you know, that's I, I kind of I. The first, I wanted to get a boat because I wanted to do something special like that. And, yeah. uh, you know, it feels feels good to, to do that. Mm. One of the things we get asked a lot is the cost. Yeah. So yeah, to yeah. do with our van, but also to do with living on a narrow boat. So is it, you know, is it cost effective? Was that something that you took into account when you wanted to move on a boat? Was Was that a factor or... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I, I wanted to be able to, this is going to sound really lazy, but I wanted to work less and have more free time. Um, but Sounds my, reasonable. Yeah. Fair yeah. <laughs> well, I hope, you know, I hope, and, if you, and if you're listening, I hope you sort of agree with that as well. But I, I just think time is such an important um, asset. And I think a lot of people just put too much um, importance on money and, and things. Um, well, I, I I love things, you know. I mean, I'm looking around myself at my narrowboat, and I've got loads of useless items that I probably should I don't need to have. But um, the whole point is, I've got the time to enjoy all this, um, and yeah, I don't take home a lot of money, but I don't spend a lot of money either. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but it's but I'm still living on the breadline like a lot of people. <laughs> it's just that's just human nature, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. One one of the things I'd say to people is, don't move onto a narrowboat just because it may be cheaper and yeah, you just it might not be if you get it, yeah. you know, a wreck that needs lots of work oh yeah yeah <laughs> it, it, you know it can add up it can be expensive yeah. but also even if it doesn't that shouldn't be the only factor that you move onto a boat because you won't enjoy the other things yeah, about you're boating be disappointed <laughs> yeah yeah mm. you know I, I mean some people can't even cope with emptying a port pie yeah 
you know, it's just one of them things that, you know, you might have to do. You might, I know that you've got a pump out. So it's all got to be pumped out though. It doesn't pump itself out. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. It's got to deal with that. You've got to deal with your toilets. You've got to fill up your water yeah. that can run out, you know, gas or that sort of, you are off grid. It's, it's just, it's, it's a messy way of life. Like, especially in the winter when you're kind of in the wood burner and you might have coal all over your hands and, you know, it's, yeah, coal gets that's everywhere. You know, yeah. You got to chop up wood. I mean, that's one of the things that, People couldn't understand when I was saying it. It is warm on the boat in the winter, but only after I've chopped up the wood to put in the fire. <laughs> yeah. So you know you can't just you can't just set your thermostat and it's going to be, you know, twenty one degrees in your boat when you get home. So. Although I think some people can have, some people have. Well, we're not in there, Lily. Oh yeah, there's all yeah. sorts of ways, you know. I mean, that's like modern. Heat. I mean, we don't have yeah. any. We don't have the diesel. We don't have the, central heat. We yeah. don't have radios. Or nothing that's where like that. that's where we're coming from, really, isn't yeah. it? We've we've yeah. we've taken old boats, the bare bones, and yeah, we're just trying to live. Yeah, off. you can have yeah. all the bells and whistles, but you know. Yeah, you can. You can have it as luxurious as you want, or as bare bones as you want. It is up to you. I mean, we didn't. We don't want it to feel like a house. We want it to feel like, well, we wanted it to feel like a cabin, to be fair. One, and that's one of the main <laughs> reasons, yeah, because we did a, a hike, a 440 kilometre hike through Arctic Sweden. And every night, pretty much, apart from a few weeks, we were staying in like log cabins in the mountains. And I just fell in love with them, didn't I? Yeah. They're so basic. Uh, yeah, they're completely just... off grid. They don't have electricity. They have a wood burner. That's, uh, it. that's it I mean some, most of them they have like cooking facilities so they've got like a gas canister outside that would you know they turn it off over the winter time but you have your own gas with you anyway because you've been camping so but, but yeah the so wood burner basic. was the aspect that yeah. was nice yeah. and the wood being in a wooden cabin it's nice and then obviously when we got back from our travels so that was kind of our uh, a 30 day project when we got back from that, we were like, well, we've got the van, but, you know, the van's hard to live in a city. You know, you, it, can, you can do it, but it's easier in a bigger van. Well, yeah, it was winter in the UK. We still don't have a heater in the van. And it was like, uh, don't want the stress of trying to live in the city, in England, in our van over winter. And we didn't know what we were going to do at that time either, because we yeah. just finished. We'd just come back from Europe and we're like, well, what do we do now? Right. So we're like, let's get a boat. Like, it's amazing. <laughs> like, we like my mum found the other day, didn't she? She found a uh, a drawing that oh, I did so when I was at like primary school or something. No, no, you were literally like five. Really? Yeah, and, really little. And it's just kind of a picture of a boat, and it no says, way. "I want, yeah. I want to live on a boat." Yeah. But you didn't know that until you saw that no, photo the other day. You forgot was, about it. I was shocked. I was like, "Oh my god!" Because when he was a kid, he did what say he wanted to live drawn? in a van, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a bus. A bus van. A bus. So would you have I, seen boats? Because obviously you both grown up in Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. You would have seen loads of boats. I really kids. wasn't interested in narrow in boat living, was I? <laughs> no. I also wasn't we, interested in van life living. Well, I, 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 I said to said to B, I was <laughs> if like... don't do it, I'll break up with it. No, he didn't really say that. <laughs> I said, I said <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to... I came home... I have lots of weird and wonderful ideas. I came home to nine. I said, we're going to live in a van. And you were like, no way. No, no. I've got anxiety. That sounds horrific. Yeah. No, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> And then, and then we did it anyway. And then we did it because everything I say I'm gonna do, I pretty much follow through with. I'm just, I just want to make stuff happen. Uh, so we got the van, and, and you loved it, didn't you? Yeah. And and the thing with the van is, it's so much like being on the boat. You know, it's very it similar in pretty in the, much the same. Is it? Yeah. yeah, you just can't drive on roads. Yeah. It's like you're just stuck to the canal network, whereas in the van you can go off in fields and stuff. I think the same kind of people who would be into kind of living in the van would be into living on the boat. So. It yeah. just goes hand yeah. in hand. What does that say about us? I'm not sure. You know. I know, no. <laughs> Weirdos. <laughs> Because I've always, I've always wanted to, I've never wanted a massive house. I've always wanted a sort yeah. of a cosy little place, really. Um so I don't know, just don't want for too much. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, because it was when when I finished uni, we were really on the track of, oh, let's buy a house now and blah de blah blah I think it's very easy to get trapped into that kind of, you know, okay, we're going to have kids, we're going to, you know, get a house, have a mortgage and, and just kind of slip into that way of life. It's, you know... Well, I mean, if you want to do that, it's fine. That's fine. I'm, I'm not against that in any way. It's just not for us. No, I've never longed for that. Do you think that's just like the path that's just set out? Um, people, so many people know that that's what yeah. what you can do. Yeah. And they don't know about the other options, and that's why. That's they're doing. literally what it is. Like I think our that, eyes have been opened after yeah. being in the van. And I think that's the easy route, but 
the harder route as well, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's almost harder financially to to keep that. You know, you got to pay your mortgage all the time. You know, you got all these bills coming in. But on a boat, it's a lot simpler. You've got less bills. So yeah, well, I find I find it difficult harder. because um, because uh, the bills changed. So mm. I didn't have any council tax to pay, mm. but I had a license. Canal and River Trust license. Yeah. Um, I didn't pay for I wouldn't pay for a landline. But I'm suddenly paying um, like for a massive uh, phone bill to cover the data mm. that, that it, I, I get 50 gigabytes of data a month just for to cope with YouTube and all that sort of stuff and work. And um, and then you've got things like gas and and fuel, coal if you're buying coal and diesel. Um, but as I've mentioned on one of my videos, I only spend about roughly about 350 quid a year on diesel, so yeah. it's not it's not too much. And the thing with coal yeah. as well. It's very seasonal. You're not going to be using that all year round. So it's like the winters and the summers are very, they do vary, I find, like with us on the boat. We spend more over the winter than the summer. I think that's, yeah, fair to say. Yeah. I, I think, yeah. But then in the summer, it's sort of like, oh, I, I, I found travelling around is every weekend when I am moving, I feel yeah. like I'm on holiday and yeah. just sort of want to go to a pub and just, and I end up just yeah. spending too much money and thinking, oh God, where's that money gone? You know, so you can get carried away. Um, and actually, the first. Um, month I was on the boat, I got carried away by going to like marinas and stuff and buying. I mean, I've got an apron with narrow boats on it. <laughs> Never used it. <laughs> what am I doing? You know. <laughs> but you just get yeah, you get a bit. I need to get one of the aprons. <laughs> yeah, you can have mine if you want. So you mentioned earlier that you've got a YouTube channel. Um, yeah. Did you set that up because you were going to get a boat? Did you want to document your whole journey of being on a boat? Uh, yeah, initially. So I was, I was in Runcorn. Um, uh, which is sort of near Liverpool, and um, I was on my own. I was on a boat on my own on the Bridgewater Canal. I was thinking, this is not what I signed up for. I signed up, to, well, I wanted to meet other people mm. and really sort of connect with with, with like minded people. So I thought, well, I'm, I'm good at editing videos. I've been doing YouTube videos for a long time, doing like comedy sort of ones, but that's not really worked out. So, what? yeah, so it just clicked. But also, the reason why I started doing it as well is because. I wanted to just um, sh share my experiences with other people who I know might find it um, difficult to find the sort of information that I was putting yeah. out there because uh, I felt like I was doing something that no one else was doing. But also, I kept forgetting where I'd been, so it was a good record of what you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Certainly, the pubs that I'd been to or where the laundrette was. Yeah. I just yeah, it just it's, made sense. It's actually really nice. Like I know with our YouTube channel, like every so often I will look back, like maybe six months ago, mm. and I'd forgotten that I'd been there and I'd done that. And it's yeah. you know, it's a really nice kind of memory well, to have, isn't it? Traditionally, um, a lot of narrowboats you. You'll find log books on them, and I don't know if yours came with one. No, it didn't. But you can buy them, and people will just write down, you know, where they've been and stuff. Aww. So it's exactly the same way, isn't yeah. it? Really, just a different format. Yeah. So, so what's next for you then? What kind of where are you heading? Um, yeah, I want to. I, I, what I'd really love to do is just upgrade the boat um, or switch to another boat and do like an MTV's pimp my ride sort of thing. <laughs> Pimp my barge. <laughs> I've said it. It's, it's happening now. It's happening. Um, so uh, yeah, and just either get a bigger boat or um, maybe travel a bit. So I, I'd love to take my my vlog idea, my voyage log, to um, uh, bases like Holland. You know, the orig originators, not the originators, but the original yeah. canals to me anyway. Yeah. And uh, France and you know Europe. So Europe. if you did that, would you get a boat over there or ship one over or do something you know like mad I think like I'd that? Probably. And get one of their boats and go yeah. around. Because, I mean, you can get across the English Channel. But... Oh no! If I was going to do that, yeah. I'd probably like do it, <laughs> get it taken on a yeah, freight or something. Or lorry, yeah. just like, can you imagine yes, that yes. went horribly yeah. wrong? Do something like that, or strap them all together, or <laughs> yeah. something like that. You know. Um, yeah, and I just love to experience other other canals, really. Yeah. Because uh, that's what I find most interesting. I think. Um, yeah. yeah, because I, I imagine they're completely different to what it is here. You well, know. literally every lock you come to in the country seems to be slightly different. Yeah, They're all yeah. bespoke pretty mm. much. Yeah, so. they are, yeah. Mm. And the canals change throughout mm. the country as well. Like where we are at the moment, they're, so, they're like half the width of the one we're in now. So, you know, it is, it is different all around. Well, another reason why I started the, 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 the vlog, because I really wanted to show that there is there are things in this country that you might not have seen before. Yeah. And um, you know, you don't have to go travelling to Southeast Asia yeah. 
you can have a right old adventure here. You know? Yeah, you do see a different right side of the UK from a canal. It is nice. It is really nice. Definitely. Even some like some parts when you're going through like quite industrial city areas, yeah. it is. It's just a different perspective. It is really. I do like that. So, as a constant cruiser, how far and how often do you have to move? It's not that easy. I mean, the, the literal the, the rules state the bylaw is that you um, have to cruise. You have to bona fide navigate, and bona fide just means in good faith. Mm. So it's a it's a it's a big grey area, isn't it? It is, it is. Yeah, it's caused. There's been quite a lot of drama for people in terms yeah. of that because it's not specified, but they do have expectations of how far you would go. I don't know. You'll to speak to some people, and some people will tell you oh, it's definitely twenty miles in, yeah. in, in a year or two hundred miles in a year. I don't know, yeah, but they, yeah, they're, yeah. whatever figure they want to attach to it. But in, if but you look I don't it up, think the CRT any... actually have a have a figure, do they? There isn't. There no. isn't one. No, there but isn't. But they do like people to do. They do get a bit funny with people, don't they? If they don't go far yeah. enough. But if you don't specify, so like, how can you expect distance? them? Have you ever had any issues with them? Yeah, I've had a few. I've had a, an yeah. email. Um, so I stayed in Banbury, I think it was, for about three weeks. Or I was there for two weeks and then I moved to a location and then came back again. Yeah. So that's sort of something you can't do. But they just send you an email and they, or a text or whatever and, they, and to say, you've been in that area a little bit too long, so yeah. you know it's time for you to move on. Um, it's fair enough. And I, I yeah. don't want it to be, get to the stage where we're saying you've got to move this much yeah. in terms of miles or to the next parish at least or whatever that mm. you know i'd rather it was kept like this because um yeah it's just <laughs> this is the whole lifestyle this is why we why we're on boats because yeah. we want to it's relaxed and break away yeah. from the norm a yeah. little bit <laughs> yeah definitely would you recommend living on a boat to anybody i can see it's not for, for everyone mm. but um and i wouldn't recommend it to someone who perhaps needs something to fix their life or whatever i don't think it's yeah. about that but um, certainly as an experience, um, and if you really want to like sort of push the your comfort zone out, I think it's definitely a g- great way to do that. Yeah, definitely. Um, but for for me, it was all about travelling. I really wanted to travel, but I was too. I didn't want to leave my home. <laughs> so this is perfect, perfect. Yeah, like a snail. Be, yeah. <laughs> and, and what I think as well is nothing. Nothing's forever. Like you can you can do this for a few years, and then if you want to go back to a house, you go back to a house. You know, or, it's, or whatever else is or, next, or whatever, yeah, van or you know, motorbike in a tent. It's it's up to you. You know, you don't have to think that it's so black and white that you just if you move onto a boat, that's it. Yeah, yeah, it's not. It doesn't have to be forever. I mean, it can just be a, a personal experiment because, like, some people like uh, David cruising the cut. He, I think, initially started. He wanted to just do a year, but obviously, yeah. it's been longer than that now because he really enjoys it. So, you know, if you, if you're a bit like, mm, I'm not sure, set yourself a goal or. We get a lot of people asking us like about move, moving into a van or living in a van or living in a boat or whatever. And I say to a lot of people, just rent one or for a week or something and just see what it's like because you might hate it. I think that's you might key, love it you know, though. Yeah, you need that stepping stone, yeah. I think. Um, you don't have to leap straight into yeah, it. Because it's probably best that you don't actually. That's, I mean, that's a pretty intense way to go into it. I mean, with the boat, we leapt straight into it, but that was from a van. So it, it didn't feel like any different yeah, for us right, except yeah. for the fact that we, we were, were on water. And we were used to small spaces. We were used to emptying the porta potty, well, yeah. finding water. It it's was it was all part yeah. of, yeah. you know. And before the van, we'd had a little self converted palingo car thing that we went out on weekends and thought, actually, yeah, we do enjoy it. But if we didn't like it, so that it, was a step up as well yeah. to the to the van. So. so you did it gradually then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But you get a lot of people who dive straight into it, and some people they just. They don't like it. Can be it. a bit too much. Yeah, and it's fine. Some people don't like travelling, you know. They yeah. just, they don't want to see the world. They just want to stay where they are. They're happy where they are. And Well, it can be quite it, stressful, you know, travelling around quite a lot, you know. Circumstances also, I mean, a lot exactly. of boaters I know, they have to, to stay in one area because they work there. So I'm just or very lucky that family and stuff like that. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Being yeah, able to move around is nice. Well, I suppose if you've got kids as well, it, it yeah. kind of changes the whole dynamic. That's this is what um, a lot of the problems are coming up with um, the Canal River Trust sort of saga, sort of you know. Yeah. It's people who have got kids in school and stuff, and they don't yeah. want to move too far. They want to be able to just kind of go backwards and forwards a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I did read an article a couple of weeks ago about that, and yeah, they feel like they're being penalised, and you know they've got a school to go to, but then there's the grey area of well, I don't need to move this far. Because it doesn't say. It's so complicated, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know what the solution is to that, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Um. 
So any any last thoughts, any kind of advice for people? I've got a good one, actually, and it's it's quite a modern way, I guess. Um, there's, there's a lot of Facebook groups around. Um, so when I knew I wanted to get a boat, because um, that's basically what we're talking about, isn't it? Sort of how do you sort of make that step? Yeah. Um, I went on to the London Boaters Facebook group, uh, which can be a bit overwhelming for the first timer, um, but um, you can get on there. And, you can, and what I did was I, I sort of spent a while getting to know people on there. And then I put out a message saying, I would love to know how certain things work. I really want to get to know how to use an engine, how, how things work on a boat. Is there anyone out there who I can come and help? You know, oh, yeah. So you offer your help. That's a good idea. And it really worked. I yeah. had some great people who just said, come along, you know, and even even one guy, um, we just ended up doing a bit of a guy called Laurie, I think it was. We just did a bit of tiling. So yeah. Just like a normal household thing. Yeah. But just being with him on that boat um, just helped me picture it a little bit more yeah. in my mind of what yeah. was possible. That's a good idea. And were they like liverboards or just a, a general yeah, mishmash? No, these, are, these guys are serious liverboards and just yeah. had a baby. So yeah. his his girlfriend was in the corner nursing a child. So, yeah. you know, it was... <laughs> so you got to see like life, the real yeah. life, what <laughs> yeah. it's like. Yeah, which, which is good because it is an eye opener. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, yeah, I think we'll wrap it up there. There's some really interesting... Uh... Unless Robbie's got some questions for us. Yeah, if you've you got anything to. you want to ask us... I'll put then, you on the then, spot. Then fire away, that's fine, yeah. Um... Question time. No, not really. I mean, we, we've, we spent, I spent a day with you guys just basically putting questions to you all, all day about YouTube and stuff like that, really. So I've, I've probably got a different agenda than people listening, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, YouTube's just fascinates me. And, you know, I I just want to know everything about it and kind of learn the, the new algorithms. It's always changing. That's yeah. what I love about it. You yeah. need to stay, you need to stay on top of it. constantly. Yeah. All social media stuff is That's always it. changing and you've got to be on the ball with it. You've got to pay attention to it. You've got to be in it to win it. That's yeah. such a cheesy thing to say, but it's <laughs> but true. But if you don't go along <laughs> with it, you know, and you don't adapt, then basically you'll get left behind. Yeah. And, th- and this podcast... Is just sort of an extension of what you're already doing. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we've been, oh, it was years ago now, like it was when we were editing the Kung Slade and we were just kind of like, oh, it'd be so fun to do a podcast with yeah. people who are like in vans and stuff like that because there's so many stories and so much interest in it. And it, now we've just thought, you know what, we're meeting up with all these people. It's the perfect time. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. it's good. I hope you got a few stories out of me and I uh, hope of you enjoyed course. it. Yeah, yeah no, it's great. Great fun. And Thanks great, for letting us. Yeah, great hanging out with you today and, and filming. So I'm looking forward to digging into the edit and getting that finished. Yeah, <laughs> yeah good <yeah>. luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to find out more about what we get up to, then head over to our website, theindieprojects.com, where you can find links to our films, Instagram, Facebook and other social media profiles. Also, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.